Hey guys, so in this next part of the tutorial series for learning the basics of C-sharp, we're going to use what we've learned already about if statements, variables, your custom methods, and the built-in ones, trigger events, and whatnot, to be able to, as you can see in, on my screen here, is in this instance we're going to have a health controller or something which controls the health of our player, but then when we collide with any of these trigger events, we're going to then change something within another script. So this is extremely important or a big, big part of anything that you do day to day. This is going to be a really simple example and this is going to help you with a lot of basic things because it's really important to split your script up into very single entities really. Because if you imagine if you to split up your scripts, you want your health controller just to manage the health of your player or your character or whatever it needs to be. And you don't want that inside your script which controls player movement or interaction with objects or something like that because it's terrible, it's completely separate and you want to be able to access it really quickly and be able to think, right, health controller, I know exactly what I want that script to be and when you go and access it, it's not 500 lines of everything in one script, it might only be 20 lines and you can qu quickly you know, access that and edit the things that you need to. So as you can see here, I've got a red and a green and when we're going to collide with these, we're going to add health to our player. So I'll show you and it's going to compound the things that we've already done, but it's a really nice way to be able to talk to the scripts, update those scripts and learn the little bits about programming day to day because this is really important. So what we can do from here is it's just like we did last time. I've got a red and a green cube and what I've got is I've got the trigger event inside each of these they're just parented to the main sort of cubes that are lit up and it has the block trigger script to it and we can use that again if we so wish what we're going to do first is right click in our project click create click c sharp and from there we're going to choose to call this health controller and we'll open up health controller in visual studio and what i'll do again yeah again is i will delete the starting methods and have the two left and right facing curly brackets so on our health controller we need to be able to decide how much health the player is going to have so yet again what we can do is but this time because we want to be able to access this health this specific health um variable elsewhere we can have public and we could call this well, as type, we could make this as an integer because it'd be a whole number. We could have the health as decimal places if we wanted. But with for an integer, we can have this and we can have this as player health. And player is lowercase. The health is upper for the sort of variable definition, just so that we don't get confused with anything else. So that's it there. We've got a variable which holds our player health and we can set in the inspector how much health we'll have when we start the game. So when we've got that, we could go into our block trigger uh, type of script. I will remove these two items here and I'll remove this variable because technically now we don't need it for now. We just need the trigger event to be able to do something. Now what we could do here is we could quite easily just update the health within this trigger, but we need a better way to do that because if we're wanting to add to the health, then take away from the health, we could use two different if statements and use a boolean. And I will give you the example in a second. So we've got our trigger event. We can say that if we collide with a the player, then what do we want to do? We want to maybe update the health variable. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to create a reference to this other script that we've got. So what we can do is in square brackets, we can say serialized field, we can say private because this one needs to be private in this instance because we only need to access it in this script. So what we'll say is we'll say private and we'll specify the name of the script, which is health controller. And then we can call this my health controller as the name so we don't get confused. Then what we can do is when we reference this my health controller, we can access anything in this script, which is public. So what we could realistically say is we could say my health controller, just like that, we can say dot and we specify with a full stop or a dot anything inside that script if we start typing it. So we can say uh, player health and then we've got access to that variable. So what can we do with that then? We could possibly 
use a few different types of operators and operators are it could be minus it could be a minus addition division multiplication and it could be a few other operators which are really important for us to use now if we wanted to add health to pl uh, player's health itself we could just use plus plus and what plus plus means is every time we go into the trigger it will add one to the health. Similarly, if we wanted to take one away each time, we could use minus minus, and it's just an, a simple way to subtract one or add one each time we go into something else. Now, if you wanted to be more specific, what we could potentially do, then you could say equals my health controller dot player health plus, and then we could specify a value that we want to add to it, or up here we could specify that. In the square bracket serialized field we could have private and then we could add we could say call this private integer damage or yeah again as another one we could say private integer heal and then what we could say here is that we always specify the variable name on the left side of the statement and then we have to specify the variable again to add a value to it so then we could say damage but in this case instead of it being a plus value we want to say we want to take away damage from the player's health so that means whenever we go into a trigger that we specify we're going to actually take away health now that wouldn't be very good because we'd have this same script or this same statement no matter if we went on either of the actual triggers but we want a way to detect whether you know it's one or the other so what we could do is we could write or create a variable which is a boolean which is says whether something is true or false. So up here in our variables we could say again serialized field because it's going to be another private variable. We could call this as bool and we could say that um, call this one damage bool and we could do this again and say serialized field private bool uh, health, heal bool as an example. And what we could specify in here is in our trigger event, we'll say that if it's a tag of player and we could use another operator called and 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 and, and means if you've got a um, if statement or something like that or something that you want to be um, attached to something else, we can say that if it's a tag of player and 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 the damage ball is true then we can do the damage. And similarly with the use of if statements, we could also say that else if exactly the same as this line here paste it in and we could say that heal bull and then we could do a similar thing copy the entire line paste it in here and choose plus health or plus heal should i say so what this means is that in this instance when we collide we're going to say that if um other dot compare tag if we're looking for player and damage ball equals true then we can take away some amount of damage to the player or in this case with the else if statement we'll say that if it's this then if the script is doing it and it'll say well it's not that we'll run down here else if means if it's not that try this so then if it's looking for the player and heal ball is true then we can add some heal value to the current health so that is one way to do it and we'll test that out in the script or in the unity so you can see it here i've got my health controller which i need to specify so what i'll do is i will create an empty game object just below here i will reset the transforms in the top corner i will call this health controller and what we can do is add health controller to that you can see that health controller is currently zero we'll put that at something like five then on the red trigger that I've got, is you can see that we need to add the health controller to that slot. We'll say that damage for this is going to be, when we want to take damage, it'll do two damage. We want to say that damage ball is true because we want that to be the one that we want to use. Then in this uh, instance, we'll have heal ball to true. And in this instance, we're gonna be heal by four. So what do we expect if we have this health controller? You can watch it in this con. And you need to make sure you remember to add the health controller to this. So now we've got the health controller selected. We can press the play button. And you can see that when we interact with the cube here, we're going to lose two health like we expected. 
and when we walk in or when we collide with this we're going to add four to our health so it's exactly what we expected to happen so in this instance we created a variable to do damage a variable to heal of uh, two booleans to test whether it's true or false we have our trigger event which uh, which asks what we're going to do we're going to check for the player and we're going to check for each of the booleans if it's heal or damage and then we're going to do the damage that we specify to the actual player or object that we've got so with this script here it's quite simple and straightforward to do and it just requires a few booleans and a few ways to update the health of what you want to do so this uses to be able to make certain things public access another script update the the variable that we've given in this case it was health with damage and with healing using booleans using a few operators and you can take a look at all the different operators and different um, types that you've got in unity using the google or the uh, documentation but it's a really nice way and it's just a good way to just imagine the idea that you want to create and just break it down into really simple steps so thanks again for watching and don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers